desk to walk us through their first win of the series. Thank you, Riv and Cloud9, making me a liar there. I get to join, join the table of <sighs> liars to liar liars. desk, losers, whatever you, you want to call how, it. How does it feel to be the head of the loser desk? I mean, the head of the losers is, <laughs> is better than being just a loser, right? I guess. I'll take it. Anyway, let's talk about Cloud9's victory here because we were actually kind of pushing them towards maybe putting more pressure on his sneaky shoulders, sure. grabbing that Kog'Maw for him, and going into that, you know, hyper carry 80 ADC kind of a, a team comp. Well, they do the opposite. They give it away, yep. and they still come out with the victory. Well, it's interesting. I know I like floundered around a whole lot when you're like, what should C9 do? And I'm like, it's like 17 things they could do. They went with the, hey, balls, go be crazy one. Right, because he did great in game one. He beat up Quas there, and he just managed to follow through on it. And I know you were like the entire game, like, oh my God, Balls is huge. He's getting bigger and bigger. He's like up 100 CS this game. He was like level 18 for everyone else. And right at the very end, you heard the commentators say it, getting split pushed to death, right? Like, you have only one threat. It's only the Kog'Maw, and Hecarim's going to keep applying pressure and keep making life difficult. C9 got a Baron off of it. And then they just kind of kept control. They kept a gold lead, and there was really no easy way in for the, you know, the, the Kog'Maw-based composition because there's too many things going on. You can't react to all of them. And something I liked, the adaptation there, was they didn't ban the Lulu. They left it open. They basically baited Team Liquid into picking this comp because as soon as they get Lulu, they're going to go Juggermaw full on. And then Meteos just started ganking bottom. He put the pressure in the lane that they had that was winning and just shut that down. He's like, all right, immediately push that out. And then CS advantage across the board. High was able to keep even and a little bit ahead of Phoenix at some points. Yeah. And the fact that he picked a very safe champion for him, I think is something that Cloud9 needs to continue to do this series. Because on Lissandra, he was having basically no impact and falling behind. Yeah. On Corky, you can have like pretty moderate, even no impact, but he'll still stay up in CS. He'll stay safe. And I think that's really good for High. Uh, sorry, go ahead. I think like the two biggest things this game that happened for Cloud9 that was really important is, first of all, um, they got high on a pressuring mid lane champion, Corky. I feel like Corky's like his best champion right now in the meta, yeah. um, where he's pressuring Phoenix in. Phoenix isn't on his best champions, and when Phoenix isn't on that Azir, that Vlad, that Urgot, he doesn't have that pressure that he usually does on those champions, and he's not like doing as well. And the other thing is Medios got that bottom lane pressure off. Even though he was playing Sejuani, he got Sneaky ahead. He got him snowballed so that they could just keep pressuring and um, snowball the game with all that split push and just constantly farming up while Team Liquid couldn't do anything with their carry comp. And I think that quirky pick is just going to be very important for the series. Yeah, looking at Team Liquid and how they seem to be ca caught off guard with that Corky pickup. We talked about the possibility of them having to pivot into that Scion pick. And, you, yeah. I mean, we, we can't, obviously we can't confirm that. You see them here on your screens. They're clearly talking about the loss that they just got handed, and they're going to have to regroup and try and come back and make it a 3-1. But without knowing whether or not the Lulu was always intended to go mid, I have to wonder when Phoenix was applying so much pressure in the mid lane and, and really having a handle on that, on that matchup, right. they put him on to Lulu, and he does struggle a, bit, a little bit against that Corky. Yeah, I think it's a bit of squandered resources here, right? Like, Phoenix hard carried game two. He was like the reason they won. He dunked on lane, and then he absolutely crushed team fights. I want to see him on an impact champion. I think... Team Liquid can reliably expect Phoenix to be a bigger threat than High, provided they give him a half-decent matchup. Lulu and Akorki, not really a great one. I want to see him with something actually much more aggressive, something that can make a whole bunch of plays. And there's more champions there. He can play Xerath. He's a good damage threat. He can play some R. He can play some Zed himself. He can play Cassiopeia. All these are very good high-damage champions. I think the biggest question for this game for is how deep is Phoenix, Phoenix's champion pool really? Because usually in a best of five, you run one strategy, and you keep running that strategy until they beat it. And finally, Cloud9 found something that works. They banned out three mid-champions from Phoenix. The question is, does Phoenix have a fourth champion? Does he have something that is he's that strong on? Maybe it's Corky. Maybe they're going to take away Corky. Um, I feel like the Lulu going mid instead of going top was yeah. not that impactful for Team Liquid. Yeah, that's the thing is they need pressure from that mid lane. They did have the Scion, but he got four levels behind, down 100 CS, like... Throwing a Lulu up in the top lane, that same situation is going to have a better time, right? If you're 100 CS down as Lulu, four levels down, you're like, oh, I'm still doing Lulu things. I'm still buffing the Kog'Maw, right? If they're mid laner, they could have picked pretty much anything in that situation. And it would have been a little bit better for them because they would have had another threat because it was all on Piglet's shoulders. Yeah, honestly, so we talk about things on Piglet's shoulders and, you know, you can see single threat comps. Like, I, I'm thinking about it, I'm like an Orianna. 
would have yeah. been okay too. Sure, just right? another a damage dealing like semi support. Yeah, just uh, and I agree. Yeah, I, I mean I do like seeing teams diversify again. And at the very beginning we talked about C9 how they diversified a little bit. Balls was a big split push threat. Got them Baron. That's huge, right? And against a new new team, dear God, like. The levels of awesome there are pretty high. Uh, but it was cool to see C9 like have everyone pitch in, mm -hmm. right? So much of this game is on Sneaky's shoulders. And Sneaky is still performing. Even in losses, I feel like Sneaky's score lines and contributions are quite high. But he crushed the bottom lane and he got help. So good job, everyone else. And then crushed bot lane even harder. Uh, high won his lane, sick. Balls won his lane, also sick. And so everyone here is contributing from C9 in like... You were talking about how, how deep is Phoenix's champion pool. You know, can he be, can he be brought down? Well, High got brought up. Right? We're like, all right, come into the playoffs. High can play Liss and High can play Zed. And we saw Liss get stomped. We saw Zed basically getting preemptively counterpicked. Well, well, Corky's here, though, by the way. And like, if High can keep putting in these performances and going 10% above Phoenix, then this is a, almost an easy series for C9. We're almost seeing the number of power players on each team shift yeah. as we saw the pick and ban phase alter, right? Because you, you get rid of all of what we said was Phoenix's power champions there in the mid lane, and, and then you take the Corky away from him, you're relegating him to someone that isn't going to be a playmaker, mm -hmm. if anything, and, and then also someone that he might not be quite as comfortable on. In the meantime, you therefore boost High's performance. Yeah. Someone who in the previous games had already played Cor you know, and we said, mm, he didn't play so great on his first Corky game, wasn't that impressive, but when you give him the edge in that mid lane, he can use that to his advantage and, and, and strengthen their team. So I feel like for Team Liquid, they're challenge now is to get back to that multi-threat strategy because yeah. in that game they were a single threat and here's the thing about liquid best of fives are what they love they we constantly talk about team liquid how they have a million strategies out there when they played clg they played three different comps here they've played roughly four different comps here okay juggernaut's not the comp toss it out you got two more games to play whatever they're gonna have other things to play here i'm so confident that team Liquid have other comps to play the question is now just momentum right do does it crack in the seams maybe like, we saw them, you know, summer split against LMQ. They started 2-0, then they lost three in a row. This is always a possibility. Lastly, again, as we have Team Liquid back up on your screen, Zion, momentum, Freak just touched on it. They started up 2-0. They've been in this situation before and had it run back against them 3-2. I mean, these discussions right now, you've been in this scenario as well. What are we talking about here? What do you ignore as a team, and what do you focus on in order to make sure you can come back in with the right mindset to pull out a win? I think what a lot of people don't realize the momentum is literally one of the biggest, if not the biggest factor going into the long series where it closes up like 2-0, 2-1, like 2-2. The pressure's on, the pressure's mounting. Like, do you have somebody to bring the team back up, to focus in on what's important? Like, you don't want those doubts in the back of your mind. Like, are we actually going to lose this? Like, are we actually good enough as a team? You need to be as a team and you need to unite yourselves. And that's really hard to do sometimes when you're losing games like that and you're not really sure what happened. All right, well, we saw them there finish up their discussions. Hopefully that means they are all on the same page and they're ready to go. Cloud9, though, have kept the series alive with that important win. After the break, we'll see if they can keep the momentum on, on their side, rather, in Game 4. Don't go anywhere. All right. The Heckam loss is a fluke. Heckam, 100% win rate, OP. Confirm, let's do it. That's a real low Baron! Dominate flashes over! It's going to be going to Meteos though on the smite! Dominate couldn't get the bite off. He only got his smite. Oh, he makes it into the pit! Threats the needle, the Baron entrance! He gets in! Cloud9 is all Take tanking it. that Baron before it went down! Dirt's dead. They're killing Lemon. Phoenix is half. We can fight. Can't go. Piglet, Piglet! I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Piglet, Piglet, Piglet! Oh, I can't get there. I got him. Wait, maybe? Lemon's a little too tanky to take down. In. This fight went for Cloud9. Last Piglet time it was on the base. Piglet dies immediately. 12 to 8, 38 minutes in. Cloud9 stays alive. And we got a game four.